Thank you for the nice presentation. It's a general overview of the uh, creative economy strategy. It's the dream of the central government of Korea. And I think you have a good overview of the Korean uh, approach, how to bring together with this innovation and the creativity. In the morning, we have a nice uh, lecture done by the Stanford professors and the Korean government is following this kind of approach <coughs> for the 20th century. Uh, up to now, we have had three presentations by the representative of uh, central government. In about uh, 15 minutes, I will open the discussion, not only by this uh, panelist, but also the uh, audience as well. But to prepare some uh, questions, I will open three questions for all of them. Then I will give the opportunity for the panelists at first, and then I will give your time. Okay? The three questions is the first one, the role of the government. The role of the government to facilitate the innovation toward creative economy. This is the first one. Role of the government. What kind of things government can do to facilitate technology-based economic development, innovation, and also the training for the great economy? Central government, local government as well. This is the first question. And the second question is the uh, some uh, system you have. Which kind of system is very effective? Uh, as the uh, uh, viewpoint of the second government to facilitate this kind of approach, the second question. And third question is in the morning, it is necessary for us to bring together with creativity and innovation. This gentleman suggested these two must go together. That is the only way to challenge the creative economy in the near future. So uh, as a panelist, you have any idea how to go to match together with this? So I will open three questions, not only for the panelists, but also for the audience as well. The audience not open the question, but you can open your the option you have about these three questions. Then you can be talk a little more about other ones. And uh, I will give the microphone. You will have a microphone on your table, so you can use it. Okay. Yeah, the second one? Yeah, yeah. The I have given the question, what kind of role of the government to initiate this kind of innovation capability. As a minister, what is the important role for the, uh, the government to do? This was the question. Second question is that which kind of system is particularly important for your mind? And third one is uh, you have any idea to bring together with creativity and innovation to facilitate the creative institution. You can choose three of them, or you can go okay. four of them. Well, thank you, Dr. Ho. Um, in the stage that of development that Costa Rica is facing now, I would envision as the most important law on a national basis to have tax incentives for innovation. But before we have that law at home, and probably this is true for many developing countries, we need an accounting system, a general and international accounting system that will recognize the investment, the small and medium, well, the firm enterprises, especially small and medium, what, how much money they dedicate to innovation, to the different types of innovation. 
And by having a new law with fiscal incentives, plus an accounting system that recognizes those investments or expenses, I think we will really uh, start a new era of innovation in my country. The second law that I think it is necessary to have, because the first law is to use the company on resources from the fiscal arena to promote innovation. But the second law would be to develop the uh, investor's market in venture capital. <coughs> For me, those two laws, from a general national perspective, could be the most urgent needs for the future to promote innovation. Do you think uh, this uh, legal uh, instrument to support uh, innovation activities? Yes, because we lack those legal instruments. But next to that, of course, it should be all the muscle of the government to make it a reality. Not only have it as a legal uh, in paper, as we say, but legal and in reality with the promotion from the government. Yes, uh, we have the law for national system research uh, development and application of technology, science and technology. So we have a presidential decree for accelerating and expansion of economic based on innovation. We are very uh, keen to use the word of how to establish more technopreneurship. It's, uh, it's very popular now. We have many uh, programs facilitate this kind of technopreneurship that uh, entrepreneurs uh, adopting the uh, research results from our universities or research institutions. We have an incentive and disincentive. Uh, the incentive is the tax uh, free uh, for the company who spend their profit at least uh, 5% for R&D spending because we are going to have more private or big companies spend for, for R&D. At the moment, government money is uh, much thick more in the R&D uh, activities. And mostly the small medium enterprise in Indonesia is willing to adopt the uh, research result from the technology from the university or from the research center. But uh, big company is, uh, uh, there is some uh, hesitation because big company needs to think more that, as we have, uh, you know, lesson from our, uh, this morning. <laughs> because big company is uh, incremental. <coughs> the a big surprises is uh, from the uh, software developers. That we have a use of young people, talented, and they are growing themselves uh, to have a profit to develop some uh, software in many, uh, many creatives uh, in ICT. And this is a very encouraging. And the other one is uh, to disincentive uh, for, you know, uh, if uh, the government or the other big company you know, imported a uh, technology product abroad, we, uh, we give more incentives to the uh, who adopted local technology program. And we have also uh, what we call it is uh, think kind of what will it? I have a colleague here, uh, domestic content, okay. uh, technology, 
technology then domestic content that will be given privileges to the company who adopted this technology. Uh, the problem is actually uh, not every company or small medium enterprise is not the uh, regulation. And then some agency, the, the government is uh, spirit, you know. We have to have to work in one roof. I think that's the problem. Yeah, this is, uh, but we have to have to go ahead, otherwise we will fail. Not going anywhere, we trap in the efficiency we can take. Okay, I think that's from Thank you. Thank you. Then the uh, back to you. Thank you. I think uh, the role of government uh, is to lead the uh, national innovation systems to develop uh, national innovation system, uh, role of uh, innovation actors such as industry and universities and research institutes are very important to activate uh, this uh, innovation effort. I think uh, uh, we have to remove the regulations and barriers and also invest and the investment and develop human resources. And I think it's already uh, easier to develop <coughs> national innovation system, but it's very difficult to link with a local innovation system. This is uh, our uh, main uh, focus recently, uh, how to link National innovation system and local innovation system. Uh, as I presented uh, in my presentation, I think uh, uh, we have to foster uh, local government to, to uh, develop their own uh, local uh, or regional innovation system by themselves. And then we have to find how, which uh, asset or which you know, resource they uh, are mainly have. And then uh, to uh, propose to uh, develop their main uh, important asset and to leave human resource to that area and uh, transfer their main uh, resource, human resource or technology to the final or to the market or uh, to the industry. Uh, we know the problem and we find uh, the way how to approach but it's very difficult to find a real solution. And then this is how we uh, try to uh, connect local uh, government and uh, central government together. And then the final question was uh, uh, linking together creativity and economy. That uh, is very uh, difficult question and uh, that uh, was, you know, the creative economy and is such a problem. We start, we try to start from the, uh, the idea from the normal uh, people, uh, from uh, you know, till uh, last year, we try to start from the technology learning development or uh, engineer or researchers. But uh, it should start from the people, and their idea should be, you know, uh, respected. And then we try to uh, develop their idea and help their idea to uh, become uh, intellectual property and to uh, help them to be, a, you know, uh, certain uh, services or product. That's, you know, uh, recently our government is uh, considering and focused. Thank you. Thank you.
Nam, and uh, we have uh, some <coughs> the guests from the European country. So uh, I will give next the time to you. Then before I will invite the Dr. Prashna, he is working for the European Union. And uh, do you have any idea about this uh, system of uh, innovation and to link together with the creativity and the innovation? You have already told the innovation approach, not based on the creative itself, it must link together with conventional industry. That is very important. Why don't you explain what is more about that? Particular for the ministers and mayors. I, I mean, my name is Van Kampa from the Ministry of Commission. I made yesterday a comment on the creativity and creative economy. And I think what, what is the, if you put together what Mr. Dasha said this morning, yeah, I think what we need to do is, what is challenge is for the future, is that we take the open innovation model, yeah, and we have all these technology providers, we have all these researchers, and they are creating nice bubbles in this funnel, you know? You saw these lines, yeah? You have an idea, you have a technology, but it never reached the market. The open innovation model is saying that every research that does not make this whole way can be picked up by everyone. And who is that? This is a challenge. These are the creative people. You know, what we have in the mobile phone, yeah? This is creativity, because all the technologies have been there, but someone put it together and, and combined it in one thing. This is technology fusion. Yeah? And I think the, the only thing where we can use the, the creativity is in order to use it to fully exploit the open innovation model. So we need the creativity of the creative people, but those are, those are not the ones that will be the, the entrepreneurs. And this is a challenge. How do you bring together the ones that can see a technology and see the adaptation, but they are not necessarily the entrepreneurs? And regarding the text models, um, I don't know how it can work that you measure innovation spending in a company, because the only thing that you can measure is research spending. Yeah? And we have, our company has a, has a huge, huge uh, spending on research, which is above the 10%, which is normal for ICT company. Now we run 34 research projects, big ones, from 3 million to 50 million, yeah, in parallel. And this only helps us to survive in these niches. Yeah. And what, what, uh, what I would say as a recommendation for, for small countries or developing countries is what, what the Commission now is, is putting under the, the name Smart Specialization. I think we should forget about the possibility that each region can be a specialist in ICT, in biotechnology, in agrofood, in, in all these topics. Yeah? It's much better that the country focuses on some power zones for specific topics. Yeah? I think this is, this is a good way in order to develop a country, but not that everyone is trying everything and afterwards achieving nothing. And, and we learned the lessons, I think, in Europe, that every region, and in Germany you see in the 16 regions of Germany, yeah, where every region was smart in ICT, smart in biotechnology, but the reality is really different. Yeah? It's, it, it's a competition against each other instead of working on a common goal. So what industry needs to see is what is the common goal in the future, where do we want to go and where do we get really the support. Yeah? And ICT in the creative economy is the enabler. Yeah? I think the ICT, only with ICT we have been able to exploit open innovation. Without, without ICT, no chance. But now it's not, it's not just so. Thank you. And on the floor there is a little push to me. Go ahead. The next presentation. So I will give you a chance to speak at the end of our presentation. Uh, I will be So just the five minutes I will have, then I will finish it. So gentlemen, uh, show me their interest. Question or something? Question. Question, yeah. Sure, as sure as possible. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Uh, I just like to pose one question. It's regarding the panel of this session, innovation facilitator. When we say facilitators, usually it means that we stay in the background, we create a good ecosystem. But I'm thinking, this is when we say government. Does the government always has to be a facilitator? Uh, before Mr. Hari shows in his translation that the government role is to facilitate, intermediate, and regulate. But can the government also become an initiator or a leader when it comes to innovation? Because uh, in the presentation of Mr. Yong Chakra, in the year of 1980s, the R&D uh, R, uh, R that is funded by the government moved to the area at Daigo. That means the government plays a leading role, plays an active role as an initiator in innovation. I would like to ask about your opinion, the opinion of the honorable uh, lecturer, the honorable uh, lecturers or five of them. Do you think that the government role should stay only as supporting or can they also take a very active and maybe leading role more up down than bottom up? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I think because of limited time, it's better for me to give a direct answer to him on the field of the person. If we have any further question, I will give you the microphone. That is the different uh, attitude and job in accordance with the development of the country. In, in terms of developed country, the government <coughs> must play a limited role is the procedures, supporters, facilitators. But in developing countries, they have a zero pain. They must do something, but they have nothing to step on. Their post-central government initiated sometimes to uh, establish the science part and to support for the research institution, sometimes a big company, through the help of the government. That is the initial stage. So in Korea, in the 70s, 60s, we are on the developing stage. So central government had to do something to make a pace to step on. But currently, we are already developed it. So uh, the central government must be behind this uh, industry research collaboration and innovation. That is my answer. But I think uh, they have another respond to you. So, if you like, I will give you my microphone. Nobody? <laughs> if you like. No, I agree with you fully. Uh, if, if you're in the developing stage, the government should be not only a facilitator, but a promoter, a dynamic, aggressive, and a strategic promoter. No doubt. I mean, there is no other recipe. The government has a definite role. When the ecosystem is already mature, it's different. Then it would be a facilitator, and the instruments probably will be more related to finance. But direct intervention is the first step, in my opinion. Uh, I think I would not refuse you since you are my colleague. <laughs> what we have to do is actually uh, we are going to expand and accelerate it. So the government is providing initiative for expanding and accelerating. That's my answer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Limited time. Just I will uh, conclude something. Important conclusion, we can focus on the three things. The first one in the morning, how to go the critical approach of the innovation in the 21st century. We have a clear picture, who will do that? The big company could not do. Big company will not do. The too much risk, not only for the money, but also research capital as well. So, the spin out or the starting companies from the industry, university, research institute, sometimes the collaboration. This startup must initiate a creative innovation together with mix it. 
that is the first conclusion. And as the facilitated, central government, local government must support them to let them go with their own way. And second one is uh, to do that, we have a system to support it, innovation system, ecosystem, it are very much indispensable to make it. And uh, Dr. Yang told about the problem, the uh, gap between the regional innovation system and national innovation system. So these two uh, groups must coordinate very closely how to come together with it. So uh, technology and science-based economic growth must be initiated by local communities. So local authorities and government, together with the university, must try their best to bring together with this innovation system. That is the second the conclusion. And third one is the, uh, the uh, creativity is not just for the U1. The basic industry, conventional industry, and their condition must be utilized to uh, facilitate this approach. Not just being together with design and also the uh, science technology is the limited way. So the conventional industry, conventional activities, including culture or something, is very important for the code in with our way. And the Shinjo city gave us a good example how to make the best use of uh, formal conventional glass work into a new art-oriented culture things together with festival or something. That is a good example for us to think about. And uh, before my conclusion, this is a forum to share our opinions. But because of my uh, lack of uh, this power, I could not give more time to you. Sorry about that. But you have already their email address, me as well. So you can talk to them by email. I met you, I heard your presentation. How do you think about that? That is the way. So uh, I will suggest, please respond to them, whatever they want to talk. Okay? Thank you. Thank you so much.